up if you had an amazing Christmas. I know I did. As you get ready for 2022, we are starting a brand new series called Soapy Summers. Can everyone say Soapy Summers? Awesome. Now you might be thinking, what does soap have to do with kids church? Well, firstly, it is great to be clean, right? But that's not why we call this series Soapy Summers. Did you guys hear our new memory verse before? It's in Hebrews 4.12. Why don't we have another look at it? It says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. What this means is that our Bible isn't just some old book that should collect dust on a bookshelf. It isn't just a cool history report that tells us things that happened in the past. It isn't even just a book filled with good advice. No, the Bible or the Word of God is alive and it's there to transform our lives as we draw closer to God and become more like Jesus. You see, when we dive into the Word of God and read it for all it's worth, it changes our heart, our mind, and our whole lives. Who here wants the Word of God to do that in their life? Yeah, right? Way cooler than reading it like some ordinary book. So back to why we call this series Soapy Summers. SOAP is actually an acronym where each letter stands for a different word and this acronym helps us to read the Bible for all it's worth. Ready to hear what it means? All right, S is for scripture, which simply means the words from the Bible that we're reading. O is for observation, which is asking you to notice what's going on in the scripture. What is it saying? And A is for application. This is my favorite part. This is where we think about how we can apply what this scripture is teaching to our very own lives. And lastly, we have P for prayer. As we read the word of God, one of the most powerful things we can do is pray. Pray the actual words it says over our life. Pray that God would help us understand what we read or pray that God would be with us as we apply it to our lives. Who is ready to put this into practice with our very first passage of scripture? Awesome. If you haven't got your Bibles with you, I want you to pause the video and go and grab a Bible, a pen and a notebook. Ready, set, go. Okay, got all that? Our first passage of scripture we are going to read today is Matthew 5 verse 1 to 8. Why don't you write that on your page and let's read it together. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So that's the scripture. Now it's time for the letter O, observation. What did you notice about this scripture? The first thing I notice is that Jesus is teaching his disciples. This shows me what Jesus is about to say must be pretty important. And if it's important for the disciples back then, it's important for us now as followers of Jesus. The next thing I notice is that it keeps saying the word blessed or blessed. What does it mean to be blessed? When I look up the word blessed in the dictionary, there were a couple of meanings, but the two that stood out to me were made holy and supremely favored. I think the scripture is telling us that when we show these characteristics, we are made more like Jesus and that God will give us above and beyond what we could even expect. The last thing I notice is that some of the words are kind of like opposite. For example, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So being hungry and being full are complete opposites, right? That tells us that God likes to turn, turn things upside down, that he isn't looking for people who already have comfort or already have boldness or are already full, but he will take the opposite and turn it around for the glory of his kingdom. 
There's lots more we can observe from that and I encourage you to write some of the things down that you noticed. But don't worry if you don't get it all. We have our whole lives to keep reading and understanding God's Word. Pause the video now if you need a few more minutes to write down what you noticed. All right, our next letter is A for application. As I said to you guys before, there is so much we can draw out of the Word of God. So today I'm just going to focus on two things. Firstly, the part where it says, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Mourning is a type of sadness. You might mourn if your pet dies or your friend moves to another state or if something sad happens in your family. This tells me that mourning is a normal part of life. But the second part gets me excited because it says they will be comforted. This tells me that when I'm sad, I can go to God and my comfort comes from Him. The second thing I think we can apply today is the verse that said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, there are some big words in there. Righteousness means being made right in the eyes of God, or as I like to think of it, becoming more like Jesus. We can apply this verse to our lives by getting hungry to be more like Jesus, following in his footsteps every day, saying sorry when we mess up, and then we can know that our hunger to become more like Jesus will be filled, that God sees our heart to follow him and become righteous, and that he will help us get there. Pretty cool, right? Why don't you pause the video again and write one or two ways you think you can apply this scripture to your life. Okay, last but not least, we have the letter P. Who can remember what the P stood for? That's right, prayer. Why don't you repeat after me as I pray for you? Dear Jesus, thank you for teaching us through your word. I pray that you help me apply this scripture to my everyday life. Help me to be hungry to become more like you and to know that you are there to comfort me when I'm sad. I pray that as I spend more time reading my Bible, it becomes alive and active in my life. And everyone said, Amen. So good, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed our very first episode of Soapy Summers. <laughs>